Good morning. Welcome back to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. All right, I've been sharing some good news. I want to put in perspective, there are a lot of things in the world going on right now, and of course here in our country, that can uh, have some negative impacts and, and have us, you know, worrying about what the market, you know, is the market going to take a big tumble when it's hitting these big highs? And so I want to share some perspective from the analysts that uh, about what the markets have done in given times and given periods in the past and how might that look for the future. Uh, some, some other things, I mentioned the S&P 500, which is uh, of course the broad index of the market, broad market of the market, if you will. One of the things, again, 9.5% return last year. Well, here's another one, the Russell 2000 index. And the Russell 2000, by the way, these are the 2,000 largest of the small companies in the United States. And it last year had an average return, are you ready? 19.48%. This is, goes into portfolio construction again. I've talked uh, before about portfolio construction and the importance of asset allocation, and I've talked about Nobel Prize winning research by Dr. Eugene Fama in developing what's known as a three-factor uh, model. One of those factors, that if you blend together large companies and small companies, you can smooth out some of that volatility because small companies, yes, they'll give you a bigger return over time, but they also give you much greater risk. If we blend them though, they tend to have a negative correlation. Not always, but again, we're looking at statistical averages here because the whole concept is nothing is nothing happens the same. There are no absolutes in this, right? There, it's like, then they're not, not the never or the ever, right? What we're talking about is in fact that statistically, statistically, however, the probability of this is greater in terms of this negative correlation, one being up and the other down. Now in this situation, if you had those two blend together, you're looking at about a 14, 15% average return over the last year. Not bad, right? That'll stay ahead of inflation and taxes. Now that was a really good year in 2016. We're gonna be looking at other averages as well. So let's take a look at the next slide. Stocks after, rise during rate height cycles. So stocks have continued to turn, trend upward. And this goes back again, what we're talking about as far as the Federal Reserve is starting to raise rates. And they're talking about potentially raising these rates at a quarter of a percent per year, uh, excuse me, per quarter, uh, over the rest of, of the uh, balance of this year and, uh, and on into next year. So this is keeping up. Now here's the part that uh, comes in with that. When, they, when the Fed raised rates over a, a little over a year ago, back in December of uh, 2015, the market swooned. It went through a really tough period. This year we've had, since then we had a, a rate hike in 20, we've had three rate hikes since then, and basically stocks have continued to trend upward. Historically, in fact, stocks continue to trend upward, even as Federal Reserve has tightened its monetary policy. So it's in keeping with the historical trend as rate hikes tend to only occur against a backdrop of sustained economic growth. Now, even though that growth has been very tepid, the, the consumer sentiment is much more positive and things are looking better from that standpoint. Now, again, we just talked about the jobs, the job report too, so that doesn't mean we're out of the woods, but it does give us some positive news. Uh, tight labor markets, relatively muted volatility. So the environment that prevails today is one that should uh, continue to support equity prices until monetary policy becomes truly restrictive. So right now, this gradual increasing should be a help. Sh slow tightening should also support markets for some time. So if we take a look at the next slide, one key driver, all right, we can see these trends. So basically what we're seeing with the chart is how the uh, pace of Federal Reserve rate hikes by tightening cycle and the effect on the basis, you know, as far as basis points. So not surprising there's been a strong inverse correlation between the pace of Fed rate hikes during monetary tightening cycles and stock market performance. The more deliberately the Fed ra ratchets up benchmark interest rates, the stronger the market gain. Okay, I'm gonna share something with you again. When it comes to portfolio design, this is the news that I'm giving you with regard to the markets and trends and what you, you know, this again, these, this has to do with statistical probability. It's showing what's happened in the past, how that could, in fact, bode, you know, be, be positive as far as the future goes, but how you're structured is a big part of that as well. So again, for the first 10 callers, I'm gonna help you put this together, right? Take this information and put it together in a plan. So the first 10 callers to my office, 615-376-5325 for a free retirement income analysis. Tess is standing by. She'll get your information. She'll send you out a checklist of things to bring to your uh, appointment with me. 
uh, whether it takes one meeting, two meetings, or whatever it takes to get a comprehensive plan that you can actually use, that's what we're offering for the first 10 callers. And when you come into the office, by the way, in this analysis, we talk about things like Social Security. When's the best time to take it? If you're already taking it, how to minimize taxes on that Social Security. We're going to talk about your retirement accounts, 401k, 457, thrift savings plan, TSP plans, uh, IRAs, Roth IRAs, Roth 401ks, Roth TSP. We get into all of that to help you, in fact, do an investment analysis to make sure that you're, what you've got in your portfolio. And I'm gonna share some things as we go through this analysis. I've pulled some of the best uh, high yield bond fund uh, ratings on Morningstar out there, the best of these funds. And I'm gonna share some information that if you go to an advisor and a lot of them are using these high yield funds, I see it because I see portfolios coming in all the time and invariably we see this type, these type of funds in there because they're trying to drive up on that fixed side on that Bonds, typically, the goal with stocks and bonds, bling them together. Remember what I mentioned about Dr. Fama, right? The three-factor model. Stocks and bonds being part of that, equity and fixed. Well, the, the purpose of bonds is to help reduce that volatility so that during a down market, you're not going to get hit as hard as if you're really strong in equities and you're going to rebound faster. That's part of the construction part. But what we're seeing is that if you're using high yield bonds, you may in fact have a negative impact there. And we'll talk about how that can work. So again, if you're one of the first 10 callers, this is some of the stuff that you're gonna get from that free retirement income analysis. And when you come in, I'll also give you a copy of my book, Seven Steps to Financial Freedom in Retirement. So again, 615-376-5325. Tess is standing by, she'll get your information and send you out a packet, okay? So, and a checklist of things to bring to your appointment. All right, so let's take a look. Small companies again, all right? So let's take a look at the next chart. Small caps, small companies generally outperform, and I was just showing you that in this, uh, in terms of how it did for 2016. Small caps generally outperform when the economy perks up. And that's what we saw right last year. It was a very positive sign, up 19.5%. Small cap stocks are more sensitive to economic growth because the goods and services produced by smaller companies tend to be more discretionary in nature. Small companies did underperform in the first quarter, but this came over a substantial outperformance in the end of last year. The small cap Russell 2000 has historically outperformed the larger cap Russell 1000 when real gross domestic product growth has accelerated. With GDP beginning to lift again, smaller company stocks could well build on their recent gains. So this is one of the things that we're looking at with regard to um, how you do your portfolio construction again. We're not, you know, again, positive news last year. We're gonna see how, if it continues, but if we've got the, your portfolio constructed properly with all the different asset categories represented, represented, you can weather that. All right, most sectors higher in the first three months of the year. So this is now the market we look at asset categories, which we were talking about with small companies and large companies. Another area, another way to slice up the market is through what are called market uh, sectors such as consumer staples, technology, financials, energy, um, industrials, that type of thing, all right? So this is showing again that most of these have been higher in the first three months of the year. Financial services to benefit from deregulation. So this is where we're also seeing things like construction, wholesale trade, finance, utilities. These are all things from very positive things. Pro President Trump, in fact, has pledged that his administration will roll out an aggressive deregulation program in the near term future. We've already seen some of that with coal industry and the other. Financial services, utilities, and energy firms, right? And coal, again, is one of those, oil, another, would be among the prime beneficiaries should he follow through on these pledges. And that's what we're seeing as these rank with them as the most heavily regulated of industries. So changing that could see a big boom there. And again, having that factored into your portfolio and your investment plan could be extremely important. And here's something interesting, the next slide. International stocks were up strongly in the first quarter. Developed market stocks advanced at their fastest pace in more than three years in the first quarter, led by robust gains in Hong Kong, Spain, Austria, and the Netherlands. Now this is an area that a lot, I, get, I hear a lot of concerns about, and even you know, where you know, are we gonna lean more towards US? 
uh, companies as a result of concerns about some of the things going, across, going on around the world. The next slide, healthy gains across most of the world uh, to start this year. So in fact, what we're seeing, again, with, his, with the analysts, equity markets in Brazil and India were especially robust in the first corner, as emerging market stocks generally fared quite well. Energy-driven markets, such as Russia, though, lagged. Now, going back to the uh, indexes, uh, now, Will, we'll, uh, well, let me go back to the indexes. So let's talk about on emerging markets and internationals. In 2016, we can go ahead and drop that slide for a second. So I was sharing with you some of the indices, right? S&P 500 index up 9.5%. The Russell 2000 up 19.4%. You know, but now let's take a look at a couple of other things when we're talking about uh, Euro-Asia and the Far East. That index 1.88 negative okay, for 2016. We're seeing internationals and emerging markets last year did not do well. So even though they're showing some, uh, some rebounding going on this first quarter, a cautionary tale there with regard to how you invest and what percentage might go into that type of category. All right, when we come, I'm going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to delve into this again. The whole goal here is uh, hopefully you'll, you're, you're gaining some knowledge about how portfolio construction is so important and how these different asset categories, how the different things going on in the world, what it means with regard to the markets and how you can invest and how to have also, we're going to talk about defensive strategies. If it does turn and we end up in a bear market, a plan that can also protect you there as well. All right, so join me here. We're going to take a quick break. Join me, we'll be right back on the Retirement Report. 